For Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomalikai. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to discuss his latest column titled Israeli Genocide Continues with International Mainly Non-Governmental Resistance. The ICJ has made a number of orders aimed at stopping the Israeli genocide against the Palestinians in Gaza. Israel simply ignores this. And you suggest not only that this is wiping out the Palestinian population in Gaza, but also that it is undermining international law. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, this has been going on for, I think it's eight, eight months now. Seven On the seventh, I think it will be eight months. And there is no sense that Israel has any intention of abiding by calls for a ceasefire or calls to allow aid to come through. The President of the United States, Biden, uh, put forward a proposal for a ceasefire. And I see in the newspaper today that um, Netanyahu says there's, they'll not stop till they've defeated Hamas. Now, the people they're attacking are not Hamas. There might be one or two amongst them, but these are ordinary civilians in tents. I mean, what soldier is going to hide together with refugees in a tent? So that's the one thing. The second thing is, for the world at large, you need to have peace. States cannot operate. Ordinary people cannot operate if there's bombing left, right, and center, or guns going off left, right, and center. And there is no way that Israel is being called to order. It's getting these arms primarily from the United States together with Germany and uh, UK and a few other states. And there's no sense that not only Israel, but the accomplices, if the next case of the ICJ, the big case, finds that it is genocide, these other states can also be charged with genocide as accomplices. And what can be done about this to allow a state to simply defy international law and commit genocide and a range of other international crimes? Well, the Security Council of the United Nations is supposed to step in, and I'm sure there will be a call for the Security Council to step in and bring sanctions and so forth. But either the United States will veto it, because they are one of five states that have the power to veto resolutions of the Security Council, and that means it cannot, it's inoperative, it cannot be enforced. The last time there was a resolution where the United States did not veto, they abstained. And the United States representative said the, the fact that they abstained means it has no enforceability. Now, that's not correct in law. Any decision of uh, the Security Council is binding on all states and and in abstention does not count the same as a vote against. So there was that, but even when there was a, a decision which was not vetoed, they didn't enforce it. I think one consignment of arms didn't go off in the second day, another huge consignment. Uh, you know, the weight of these arms that they're transporting is enough to destroy you know, whole villages or even small towns. And if it appears to be correct that even in the states who are supporting Israel, the majority of the population is not supporting and calling for a ceasefire, such as the US and the UK. So what can be done to remedy this situation where maybe a majority in the world and the ICJ try to call a halt, but is rendered null and void by Israeli defiance? Already there are signs that the electorate in the United States is not happy with Biden. Uh, and he could possibly lose. And that also creates a new disaster with Trump being the front runner of the Republicans. I think 
uh, th that in theory is the way. But when you have this big difference between what the government is doing and what the people of the country want, polls are showing that in a number of states of parts of the United States, the majority want a ceasefire. They disapprove of supplying arms to Israel, etc. So at the moment, I'm not sure of an effective way. Uh, some of the demonstrations have not been seen for decades since the Vietnam War, the apartheid period, things like that. There haven't been there haven't been demonstrations like these. And lastly, Raymond, what do you make of the student encampments all over the world? Well, I'm very impressed. Um, you know, in the past, when I engaged with students over politics, I didn't find that I found some quite a lot that they were not so mature. They didn't speak with maturity. They were quick to act and not debate things like that. Now, what's I'm generalizing, but that is my experience, but it's some time back. But what is impressive about the people who speak on behalf of the students in these encampments is that they speak very carefully. They don't have heavy slogans, things like that. They explain why they're there, what they want to do, and they're quick to give credit to others and not grab the limelight for themselves. So I think it's very important, and it's important that the students are given the lead in universities. Even when staff joined them, it was treated as a student initiative. So the staff in these universities like Columbia and various others, I mean, it's almost everywhere in the world that you've got versions of this. So I'm very impressed with the encampments. It's, it's happening here as well in Pretoria, Wits, and I think UCT. There may be one or two other places. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's Polity about Israeli genocide continues with international, mainly non-governmental resistance.